This is the first half of chapter seven, which is about measuring the labor market, employment, unemployment, and all of those related categories. It's important to remember as we go through this that some of the numbers we're going to look at indicate voluntary choices and some indicate involuntary choices. You have a job, it might be that you get fired and you don't have a choice. It might be that uh, you chose to leave. It might be that you want a particular job, but you couldn't get it and you took a job that you didn't want. Or it might be that you have the perfect job and you're thrilled. Some things are voluntary, some things are involuntary, and we're not going to differentiate between those things. The first thing we need to look at here is simply how we determine who's employed, who's unemployed. And it's a complicated process because if we start with the population of our country, we would note that, unless you're a Kardashian, you probably don't sign a TV contract the day you're born or go to work until you're a little older. So we're going to take everybody who's under 16 and we're going to throw them out unless they already have a job unless they're employed say they work in their parents business then we'll keep them but in general everybody under 16 is gone then we're going to take everybody who is what we call institutionalized in school full-time in prison in the hospital something like that you're institutionalized and because you're institutionalized, we don't expect you to be either employed or unemployed. If you're in a coma, you're in a coma. You're not employed and you're not unemployed. The one problem with this is the military. Prior to the 1980s, we simply counted everyone in the military as institutionalized because it's impossible to be in the military and be unemployed at the same time. However, during the 80s, we counted those folks as being employed to make the employment numbers look better. So now we do things two ways. You're going to see tables and charts that say civilian, blah, blah, blah. That means the military is not in there and is being counted as institutionalized. If you don't see the word civilian in there, we're counting that as counting the military as being employed. So we have the population of the country, 330 million. Then we're going to subtract out everybody under 16. We're going to subtract out these institutionalized people. And we're going to have the non-institutional population or the civilian non-institutional population if what we're talking about is uh, absent the military. Now we have this group the non-institutional population, and we're going to divide them into two subcategories. One subcategory is called the labor force. Those are going to be the employed people, the unemployed people, the people who are active in the labor market. The other group we're going to call out of the labor force or not in the labor force, and those are people who are, say, retired and not interested in working and not working or staying at home and taking care of your kids and not working or let me rephrase that obviously you work very hard if you stay home and take care of the kids not being paid for all the work that you do people who are doing work that is not resulting in them being paid so now we have the force the labor force. Labor force is very simple. All the labor force is is everybody who's employed and everybody who's unemployed. Now I say simple, but there are people out there who don't really think of themselves as employed, who the government thinks are employed. And there are people out there who think that they're unemployed, who the government might not think. There's definitions. And so we have to understand the definitions and go with the official definitions of what it means to be employed and unemployed. Here we go with that. What does it mean? To be employed, you must be working for pay outside the home at least one hour per week. So that doesn't actually mean you have to leave the house. 
if you're a nerd and you stay home and you program websites for people, your customers are outside the house. And that means that you are employed. Notice that you only have to work an hour a week, so we're not going to differentiate between full-time and part-time and do all this other stuff that probably or perhaps we ought to be doing, and we'll talk about that more as time goes on. All you have to do is be employed. One hour a week for pay, you're employed. To be unemployed, first you have to not be employed, and that seems to be easy, but first you have to not be employed, and then you must be actively seeking employment. That means you have to be looking for work in some active way. If you ever get fired from a job, you'll discover that to collect unemployment benefits, you have to prove that you went out and applied for a job. Why? Because if you didn't look for jobs, if you're not applying, you are not actively seeking employment, and therefore you are no longer unemployed. Okay, so we talk about, for example, the unemployment rate without often talking about what that means. And what that means is not the percent of the population that's unemployed, not the percent of the non-institutional population that's unemployed. It's the percent of the labor force that's unemployed. So again, because we have differing definitions of what employed is, some people may say that I'm unemployed when the government says they're not unemployed, or some people may say. And so we take these numbers and we understand these numbers and we'll talk about the fact that there are actually six different unemployment rates calculated by the government and what that all means. But we need to understand that it's the labor force. The unemployment rate is the percent of the labor force that's unemployed. Simple numerical example here for us. If the labor force, first, the labor force, were 100 million people and there were 10 million unemployed, that would make the unemployment rate 10%. In our modern world, the labor force might be 150 million people and there's 6 million unemployed, which means we have a 4% unemployment rate. It's a very simple division, the number of unemployed people divided by the number of people in the labor force. There are a lot of other statistics we look at if we really want to understand what's going on in the labor force. For example, we have what's called the participation rate. The participation rate is the size of that labor force divided by the non-institutional population. So right now in the U.S. about 63% of the people who could be in the labor force are in the labor force. That tells us a lot about who's working, who's not working, why and when and why and how. We all can also look at earnings. Turns out, for example, if we adjust for inflation, people who are paid by the hour don't make any more today adjusted for inflation than they did in 1980. Salaried workers make a lot more, but people who are paid by the hour don't. And then we talk about some very simple things. Self-employed people don't really show up in the statistics at all. So if everybody's out there and they've got their own side gig going and they're working and they created their own company, all that stuff doesn't really show up in the statistics. And if you work two jobs, you don't count as one person in the statistics. You count as two people in the statistics. So people who hold multiple jobs appear to be multiple job holders, multiple uh, workers in the numbers. There are tons of issues with these numbers, and we'll get into some of them here briefly, and then we'll talk about more of them when you show up in class, but there's some very simple issues. One is the simple fact that if you're not looking for work, you're not unemployed. So if you give up, if you've been looking for work and looking for work and looking for work, and the economy's bad and you just can't find a job and you stop looking, you're not unemployed anymore. <gasps> you're not unemployed, yay! We have a special name for you now. We're going to call you a discouraged worker. You're not discouraged and you're not a worker, but it sounds good. So if you give up looking for work, you're no longer unemployed. You're in a category called discouraged worker, and there are probably millions of those. Uh, some people are also underemployed. If you have a master's degree in engineering and you're working at Starbucks, you're underemployed. You have a job, but you're not using your skills and your training that you should be using and that you could be using in the way you want to do them. Um, number whatever up to three, 
unemployment rates vary widely by age, race, and gender. So uh, teenage people have higher unemployment, black folks have higher unemployment, Hispanic folks have higher unemployment, Asian folks have lower unemployment. Well, we can categorize all people and then we can look at try to look at the reasons why that is. If there, is there discrimination in the world? The statistics say maybe there is. Um, how do we look at all that and what sense can we make out of that? And then there's the issue that we already talked about a little bit, which is to the government, one hour a week counts the same as 70 hours a week. It doesn't matter how much you work, you're employed if you have a one hour a week job. Okay, so listen to this, do the other business that you have to do as part of this, and then we'll see you again to talk about inflation.